Okay. Um, to answer for myself, because I work primarily as a magician, it's often um, quite a lonely practice. Most magicians work by themselves. They develop the whole show themselves. They do all the writing themselves. They practice all the magic themselves. And over the past couple of years, I've become very interested in working, collaborating with other people who aren't magicians. So collaborating with Peter Bennett down at uh, the University of Bristol on technology, um, but also on ideas around technology. I find that very valuable. Um, it, it's a drift for me as a way of meeting people that I've never met before. So being exposed to very new ideas to me um, and working through those um, with people in a friendly and interesting and challenging space. Testing it to destruction, perhaps. Um, kicking it around, breaking it, seeing how it can be interpreted in very different ways. Um, for instance, the one thing that happened today that I found very valuable was somebody looking at the deck of cards that I'm researching and interpreting them uh, in a very physical way. So seeing the poses of the drawings and wanting to strike those poses as, as an actor, as a dancer. Um, that's something that would never occur to me because I don't have that kind of background. So looking at them in a very choreographed way. There are some challenges to do with the fact that I'm determined to use magic as one of the tools of telling the story of the deck. Um, and because it's a very political story, um, it, that's one of the things that traditionally magic is, is supposedly not supposed to do very well. Everybody in magic says, don't do anything political, keep away from politics, because magic and politics don't mix. Um, I don't think that's true. I think we should be able to tackle quite important subjects using magic. Um, and magic fits, because the surrealists were interested in all of those things. One of the problems of telling the story of the deck of cards is there are so many characters. There are the eight surrealists who made the deck. There are all of the characters who are depicted inside the deck. There are all of the people who help them escape. Um, so it becomes a cast of many characters. So it's very easy for it to become confusing. Um, and also, they're, very, they're such very different characters, especially inside the deck. You know, Alice from Alice in Wonderland is in there. Uh, Marquis de Sade is in there. How do, how do you tell a story that includes the Marquis de Sade and Alice from Alice in Wonderland? Um, so it's trying to fit the whole thing uh, into one act of storytelling is really quite difficult. I've been working on it for the past four years. Um, because I realized that it was a project that needed a lot of research, um, which is both a good thing and a bad thing for me, because I'm one of those people who enjoys researching, but researching can be a way of not doing. So Hegel, for instance, is one of the characters in the deck of cards. How much do I need to understand the work of Hegel before I feel that I can sit down and actually tell the story? Um, and I think four years of, of reading around it and researching the history is enough. Um, now is the, it's the difficult question of what do I leave out? And there's so much in, there's so much I could say that it's very hard to make those decisions. That's what I'm struggling with. When I first got my hands on one of these, these decks of cards, a replica, uh, a replica of, of this deck of cards, I did the stupid thing that a lot of magicians would do, which was try to do tricks with it. Right? And the deck of cards is so beautiful that as soon as you show it to somebody and start telling them the stories about how it was made, and they don't want to see the trick. The, tri the trick becomes um, a trick with the deck itself. So I don't, I, I don't actually want to do any magic with the deck of cards itself. The magic I want to do is around those, the deck. Um, but the magic is in some ways a game. And the surrealists were big fans of games and they used games in the creation of art. So in some ways this is a, a game design challenge. I want to tell the story of this deck of cards through, through playing games with the audience. Um, so that's one tactic. Another tactic is that one of the stories is that it's, a is, is that it's an escape. That 
those artists arrived in Marseille, they wanted to escape from France, um, and the story of their escape, um, that is a very straightforward and traditional story, an escape story, you know, and knowing who escapes and who doesn't, that the tension of that story can provide a very traditional uh, line through the performance. So within that, I can play games. So the plan at the moment is to begin by telling the story of the surrealists coming to Marseille and then the story of how they escape. And But in the second act, I can play with chance, with games, with randomness, with having certain cards chosen and only telling the story of those cards, for instance. So, the, so it being very different every night. And surrealists had a very interesting take on humour. Um, Andre Breton wrote a book all about black humour. So, and he also said that one of the ways that we resist fascism is through laughing, laughing and playing, um, playing of games. So, uh, I think we face some of the same challenges. We have the rise of a very vocal right wing. We have the rise of racism again now. And one of the things that intrigues me is how do we know how bad it can get? Uh, in 1940 in Marseille, they didn't know how bad it was going to get. Um, they knew it was bad, they'd been invaded, but they didn't know quite how bad. And how do you ever know? Uh, and that, that's one of the things that really intrigues me about the situation then and the situation.